LSU had 30 some odd players quarantined after testing positive for the coronavirus. Uh, unknown how many of them were positive tests and how many were quarantined because they came in contact with people who had tested positive. But that was the headline. And it was jarring for a lot of people to see that number of players in quarantine. Um, it is worth noting a Shelly Mullinex, LSU senior associate athletic trainer who spoke to Ross Dellinger at SI. Uh, she said, quote, it's not surprising we're seeing this rise right now. It's a pandemic. We should not be shocked. The story is that it's exactly what we said it would be. We were prepared from the get-go for a lot of virus. The good news is we're seeing subtle virus illness. We'll get back to that in just a quick second. Um, the good news, as Shelly said, very few have experienced effects beyond just mild symptoms. And what you probably know over the weekend is that you know, more than 100 uh, Tigerland bar goers apparently tested positive for the coronavirus, causing some of the bars in Tigerland to shut down. This is exactly what happened. You had college football players in the college bars where coronavirus was apparently running rampant. Um, but something else that Shelly Mullenix told SI is that she's in constant uh, contact with the Louisiana Department of Health. So she's showing health officials their team trends, which is a, pos uh, a process that actually helped reveal the Tigerland outbreak. So essentially, because LSU is being so diligent in their testing, it's helped Department of Health officials track and trace and rate the, the outbreak. Um, so... The players that are quarantined, if you're worried about the football aspect of it, they can continue to participate in modified events, outdoor events with their quarantine group. They can't go in the football facility, but they can still do some things outside, provided they feel well enough. And Shelley also said that none of the cases, the positive cases, have been tracked to workouts within the facility. So all of the protocols that LSU has put into place apparently are working. But what LSU is doing is taking what they're calling a better safe than sorry approach, where if someone has been in contact with a player that's tested positive or a person that's tested positive, they're choosing to quarantine them instead of waiting to see if a positive test pops up. So uh, Shelley told SI, quote, the quarantine while frustrating prevents community spread. A uh, couple of other things. Uh, Shelley did speak specifically about the 2020 season. And she said, quote, I don't know that I feel worse than I did two months ago. I feel better. What I understand from my colleagues around the country and just sharing the numbers is that we're doing really well. No one is getting really ill and hospitalized. I could see where the train of thought could be we seem to be moving through the virus. For every day we're learning more information, part of me feels good. If we were seeing no virus and knew the virus was spiking everywhere, that would not be good. Again, Shelly Mullenix talking to SI with uh, Ross Dellinger, the first report the news over the weekend that some 30, um, uh, 30 LSU players in quarantine um, after coming in contact with COVID-19 or testing positive. So I've, like ever since the, the initial shutdown back in March, um, I, I haven't talked a bunch about COVID-19. We talked a lot about if they're going to play a season, how COVID was impacting things, but not specifically about you know, the virus and things therein. And I understand, like it's a sports show, people come here for sports, and so we do that. And when the coronavirus transcends and becomes a sports, you know, a topic involving sports, then we're going to talk about it to that extent. Uh, but I think this is an important time to speak my piece on a couple of things, and and I do understand that what I'm about to say, largely, is preaching to the choir. About a month ago on this show, we did what I called a town hall. And the general theme of that show, if you recall, was I just left it open to you. And I asked you one simple question. We spent three hours just getting finger on the pulse of how you felt about it. If come fall, and this was still during the shutdown, by the way. If come fall, you're allowed to go to a sporting event, would you go? And our answer was 80-20, yes. And that was even some people who are elderly some people who have pre-existing conditions. We had one guy call, said he's a two-time transplant recipient, organ transplant recipient, and he said, I'd still go anyway. It, it was striking to a degree, but, but also validating my feeling, which is that 
whether you're into sports or if you're into film festivals or you're into concerts or whatever it is that you like to do socially, when given the, the all clear to go do it, we're going to do it because we're social beings. So I do understand that a lot of people are going to hear this. In some respects, it's, it's preaching to the choir. But I want to say it to be on the record because I think it's important right now. And it's something that Shelley Mullenix said that I want to underscore, star, exclamation point, and, and sort of use that as the launching point, where she talked about how she feels better. Quote, what I understand from my colleagues around the country and sharing numbers is we're doing really well. No one is really getting ill and hospitalized. I could see where the train of thought could be. We seem to be moving through this virus. For every day, we're learning more information. Part of me feels good. A lot of people are going to see the headlines, and you're going to see the number of reported cases. You're going to see 30 players at LSU, 23 players at, at Clemson, and you're going to think this virus is just ravaging football programs and college campuses. But that's what the headline writers want. Headline writers want attention. That's the point of writing a headline on a story. It's to grab your attention so then you read through the copy. And it's one of the reasons I often talk about be more than a headline reader. But let's talk honestly about a few things if we can. And this is a great opportunity to do it because of this news. You hear a lot of coaches, administrators, athletic directors, chancellors, presidents, uh, commissioners, owners, all the, these different people in positions of authority say, we want to protect the health and safety of our players, our athletes. That's the, of the utmost importance. And I believe them. But let me ask you an honest question. How many student athletes have died from COVID-19? You know the answer. How many student athletes have been admitted into intensive care because of COVID-19? How many student athletes have been intubated because of COVID-19? How many student athletes have been hospitalized because of COVID-19? How many student athletes have even had severe symptoms? I haven't heard of one. Most of what I hear and what's reported is mild symptoms or asymptomatic. Because what we've learned about this virus is that people with healthy lung tissue largely are not affected by this virus. It's why you don't really see it affecting children. And if you're an 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 college athlete in peak physical condition, you're probably going to do just fine if you can drag COVID-19. We're protecting the wrong population. And I do understand fully that the objective is identifying people who are asymptomatic so they're not passing it on to people without knowing, which is why having student athletes on campus is a great thing. All of those players that went to Tigerland that are asymptomatic, that we now know have tested positive or around people that did, they're quarantined now, whereas if they were just out about in society, they'd have no idea. Because what 20-year-old is going to say, hey, you know what? I was at Tigerland, and somebody at Tigerland tested positive. I could have tested positive. What I should do is I should get out of bed on this rainy day, drive to some clinic, pay a copay or whatever I have to, let him shove a, a, a stick and massage my br up my nose to massage my brain to tell me if I've got COVID-19. Who in the hell is going to do that at 20 years old? You want to play college football, you will. Yo, we shut down our country primarily to prevent overwhelming the medical infrastructure. Check. We've done that. We're good. Ventilators have been sent back. Like, oh, overwhelmingly, things are back on track with medical facilities. I'm not guessing, y'all. Look, come on. I mean, I, I endorse the Baton Rouge General Hospital. You don't think I talk to people at Baton Rouge General? You don't think I have an idea of how things are going there? We check that box. And yes, the most critical people need to take extreme precautions. Y'all, my hand's in the air. Anyone who's followed me for any length of time knows I have a six-year-old little boy at home. A six-year-old little boy that was born with extreme health care conditions. A 
immunodeficiency, heart defect, pulmonary insufficiency, essentially one lung. Like, Drew is an at-risk kid. He's always at risk for respiratory viruses. All of them. Like, we're super aware of them. All have been from the day he was born. And so, you know what? We take some insane precautions and, and always have. We had Father's Day yesterday at our house. Our whole family came over. When we woke up in the morning, first thing he did is text the whole family, anybody have fever, coughing, sneezing, any symptoms, do not come to our house today. My cousin, one of my best friends in the world, his little boy was coughing, they stayed home. That's what you do. You take the necessary precautions to protect the people who need to be protected. This is not just, I know some people are going to hear and go, man, all this just to play football season. It's not just about playing football season. It's not just, oh, I got to have my, fo- my football. It's not about that. It's about having society return to our norms, having society return to our way of life. And a giant part of our way of life is human interaction and also a giant part of commerce and jobs and having a functional society. And yes, athletics is part of that. So is concerts and festivals and, and restaurants and a lot of different things that contribute. The thing I would tell you is don't buy sensationalism. Listen to what Shelly Melanick said. And she's right. It's not someone stumping for LSU's point of view just so they can play a dang football season. She's right. We're all just going to make our way and let this virus run its course until we have a vaccine. And the best way to do that is to make sure the people that need to be protected are protected and everybody else takes the necessary precautions, which largely as a society, all we have. How many of y'all washing your hands now more than you ever have before in your life? How many of y'all are wearing... (laughs) <laughs> who was thinking it was Musso who said it to me last week off air? I was like, man, if you'd have gone into a, into a restaurant wearing a mask a month, like six months ago, like they, they'd have arrested you. Now, if you're not wearing a mask, you get the funny looks. Y'all, we're doing all the things we're supposed to be doing. And you're going to expect with a virus spreading that people are going to test positive. It's going to happen. But the other thing that happens also is you build up immunity and antibodies. And one thing we know right now is that if you contract the virus a second time, you're shedding for one or two days as opposed to two weeks. So hell, part of me goes, let's have, let's have herd immunity. Get it. Let it run its course. It's no longer overwhelming our medical infrastructure, and let's move through it. So look, you saw the headline. We all saw the headline. 30 LSU players quarantined, and a lot of people freak out. Kansas State shut down their, their facility for two weeks. That ain't the right move. The right move is to press on. Because if we're protecting student athletes, you got to protect them from a lot more than COVID-19. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.